Hello everyone, today we have another video related to calculating how much work is done to move a certain object between two positions and in this scenario we have this object on an incline surface which is not going to change anything about the fact of how much work done and what is the work and what's involved in calculating work. So the question is saying an object has 5 kg mass is pushed by 100 newton force up 20 meter incline plane. If the friction coefficient of the surface is 0.2, determine the net work done on the object and the change in the potential energy of the object. All right, we can start with a few things. Now, this force here is the applied force which is the 100 Newton which one causing the motion to the top right when the question is saying there is a coefficient uh, our friction coefficient that mean there is a friction on the surface so this is a rough surface and that will be the friction force it's opposite to the motion direction okay now we know the distance, it's here at 20 meter, the angle, it's a great. Let's see how can uh, these information help us to solve the problem. Now, asking for the net work, the work net is the combination of the work done by the applied force plus the work done by the kinetic friction force right now we can do them separately then we can add them up so let's go with the work done by the applied force it will be the applied force times the distance times the cosine theta now this theta is not the 30 degrees the incline surface theta no this theta represents the angle between the applied force direction and the distance direction or the displacement direction in this case the object is moving upward and the distance also it's upward so theta here is zero so it's 100 I'm oh, sorry let's fix this quickly <clears throat> 100 times 20 meter and that's cosine 0 degree so let's do the calculation that simply will give us 2000 joules that's the work done by the applied force. <clears throat> Let's calculate how much work done by the kinetic friction force. That will be the kinetic friction force, distance, cosine, the angle between the friction force and the motion distance, or where is that object is moving. Now, that will take us back to some old videos I did about calculating the kinetic friction force um, so we can do that simply <clears throat> by following the idea of the free body diagram so we know this is the normal force that's the gravity force now this one will be the mg cosine theta and here is the mg sine theta however we know that the friction force can be calculated by the kinetic friction coefficient multiplied, let's fix this one here, uh, multiplied by the normal force, okay? And still times d times cosine <coughs> theta. Now, the mu k, the coefficient of friction, now, how much is this normal force? From what we know 
previously the normal force will equal exactly the mg cosine theta so we can say mg cosine theta place this one here put it in a big bracket times d cosine theta all right let's do it just quickly here that the work done by the friction force now once again just to make it clear this theta here it's not the same theta here the first theta here with the mg cosine theta this theta represent the incline angle which is the 30 degrees but this theta here represent the angle between the friction force direction and the distance direction so if we're gonna replace values we know the mu k is 0.2 um, the mass is 5, 9.8, and here is cosine 30 degrees, sorry about that, and we're going to multiply it by the distance, which is 20. Now, here is the trick. It's going to be cosine 180 degrees, because the angle between them is going to be 180 degrees. Simply, you just do the calculations. That will give us a negative 170 Joule. Which is, makes sense. The friction force should be negative because it's trying to make us lose how much work we are doing. And that will be getting from the cosine 180 degrees. Okay, so now we managed to find how much is the work done by the applied force, how much work done by the friction force. It's time to find the net work. So the work net equal, once again, the applied force work plus the work by the friction force. And that will give us 2000 minus 1. 70 total 30 joule. This how much is the net work done on that object. All right. Now let's go to the uh, second part of the question, which is calculating the change in the potential energy of this object. So let's do it this way. Um, we know that. The change in potential energy, it's representing the potential energy at final position minus the potential energy at the initial position. So that will be mgh, let's say final, minus mgh, the initial. However, we know the initial position was on the ground, so there is no height which means the potential energy on the ground is zero. That's it, done. We take this out. So we're going to have to calculate it just where it, how much is the potential energy at the top part. But when we look at the question we have, we don't know how much is this height. We don't have this height. So we have to work it out. To do that, it's a very simple trick using the trigonometries. That's our incline surface that's the ground and this is the height we're looking for so this is h we know this is 30 degrees and we know that this distance is 20 meter so simply we can do uh, the trigonometry's rules of sine now sine 30 degrees by definition is opposite on the hip which means h which is the h final gonna be 20 multiplied by sine 30 that's easy to do it's gonna be 10 meter height now we can calculate how much is the potential energy at the top part of this inclined surface so it's 5 
multiply it by 9.8 let's make a line here and the height is 10 we just do the calculations That will give us 490 joules. This is how much potential or change in potential energy for moving this object from the ground level to the top level of this inclined surface. Um, I hope you find this uh, example useful to understand what does the network means to calculate it when we have multiple forces acting on an object and also how you can apply sometimes trigonometries to help you calculating some other elements like the potential energy. Uh, we'll see you again with another video. Thank you.